Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. As a part of our exclusive trip across the United States of America for 2018, of course, thanks to Shannon's, we've just arrived at St. Louis at the National Museum of Transportation. Hey, would you like to see a Chrysler turbine car in operation? Well, you're about to on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Chrysler turbine car. What a sensational invention of the time. How you doing, Mike? Good, good, Fletch. Thanks for being here. Thank you for waiting back for us. No problem, no problem. I know you guys are uh, getting caught in St. Louis traffic, but you're here. It's a tight schedule across the United States for 2018. It's uh, such an interesting trip. It always is. And it's people like yourself that, that come along and we organize these interviews and the things that are around for discussion, mm -hmm. well, it's endless. This is a, a quite an it, interesting car. I, I took an it, interest in a car back when I was 10 years old. I knew all about the turbine car. I had the little Johan model kits. Uh, it just so happens one of the 50 that were on the streets in the United States back in 62 and 3 was actually sitting in front of my house when I rode my 10-speed Schwinn bicycle down the Osho Street. One of these cars were actually sitting in front of my house. And I knew all about the car, and it was just like a revelation. I mean, this car is what caused me to be a gearhead. I drag race. I have muscle cars. I like racing boats. I'm just a gearhead all around. And this is what started it. But back to the story of what, the one that was in front of my house is I sat outside, did not know how the car got there, but I knew that it had a different engine. And I remember I was 10 years old in 63. Had to go in for dinner, came out, the car was gone. Never got to hear it run, never know who had it, never knew any way of how it got there. So I took an interest, found out the Museum of Transportation out here, ended up getting one of the museum cars. There was actually six cars that went to museums back in 1967. And the museum, it was donated, ended up with one of them. Well, in 1983, the museum started a volunteer program where if you wanted to fix something that is at the museum, you could work on all you want. They would supply the money to fix it. So I uh, ended up taking this car home in 1983 and worked on it until 1991. The only bad thing is I did not know that this car had no guts in the engine. I took the air cleaner off after it's sitting in my house for three years and did not know it was gutless. All the museum cars had no guts in them. So I called uh, Teresa Brady, who was an employee here at the time at the museum, and I told her, I said, I'm going to bring the car back. I'll never get it to run. Well, luckily, she called me about 15 minutes later and said in 1977, 10 years after the car arrived at this museum, they sent an engine that was damaged that was supposed to be put on display just for a display engine. And she said, I never saw the motor, but it's out here somewhere. So I immediately, during the dead of winter, snow on the ground, drove out here. We went down to the car building, it's called, and found a wood crate. And there was an engine down there, took the inspection plates off the motor, and the turbine blades, all the guts I could see were in there. And with a lot of uh, help from engineers, uh, mm -hmm. tooling engineers at Chrysler, where I did work at the time, we uh, made parts for it. So along with the good parts and the bad motor and the good parts we made from the bad parts, I put it in a good case and made the car run. Oh, you're clever guys. Yeah. That, that's, that's very clever work. Did you think at the time that possibly the production would continue? Did you have these visions of our roads maybe one day being full of these things? Mm, I never thought of it that way. The reason the turbines really came to an end is pollution, laws started coming into effect. They were actually going to build, in 1967, 505 
turbine engines in cars, and they were going to put them in, I shouldn't say 67, it was going to be sold in 67, but the 66 Charger was going to have turbine engines in it, which very few people know about that. And the, the original 66 Fastback Charger was originally going to be called the Typhoon. And it was designed to put the turbine, the fourth generation turbine engines in it. Then pollution EPA started coming in. The motor at the time could not pass it. The seat belt, seat belt laws were coming into effect. The car didn't, didn't, didn't have an EGR valve? No, it did not. <laughs> this is what I admire about Chrysler. Is that they were so game in trying different things. Their shapes, their styling. I mean, look at the back of this car. There's no other car like it. It, 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 is, it is a rocket ship. Other than myself and maybe Jay Leno, I'm, I'm the only one that carries a key daily with my key rings for a Chrysler turbine car. That's it, it's ready to go. You got instant heat. You don't have to wait for any heat. Uh, the heat's coming off bleed air on top of the engine. And if it's during the winter, you're gonna get nice and cozy as soon as you pull out of your garage, you're ready to go. Right now it's running about 1,250 degrees, which is okay as long as the engine is functioning properly. The flame inside the motor is basically suspended. It's, it's theoretically not touching any metal. It's just got an expansion of gases trying to get out the motor. The expansion of gases is running a set of, of fan blades basically hooked to the transmission and it pushes the car. What do we say, Mike? What an extraordinary car. It's been a lifelong dream to, I guess, work on this car, keep it running. Uh, it's just, it's so much fun. It's such a huge piece of Chrysler history. This is it. This is the car. This is the legend. It's exciting to see it just do 30 meters. You don't even have to see it out on the road. Right. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's such an attractive car. Uh, when we'd go to shows, people just... Mm just flock to it and like I say it's just such a big piece of Chrysler history. <laughs> Good on you Mike. Look it's late in the day on a on a Friday night here in St. Louis. Again thank you for uh, for uh, staying back um, and uh, greeting us and showing this, this car, getting it operational. It's the first time in my life I've ever heard one run and uh, thanks again mate you've, you've blown us away. You're welcome Fletch. It was great doing it. Thank you. Good on you. Yeah I can I can tell this guy hates coming to work doesn't oh, yeah, he? Yeah yeah I hate it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Fletch. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King Hoist. Easy to install models in one, two, and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? 
Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Welcome back. Mark, how was that turbine car yesterday? That was fantastic. Uh, definitely one to tick off the bucket list going for a ride in the turbine car. It's, not many people could say they've done that. And hats off to Mike too, the work that he did uh, in, in his own time, that dedication, but also fortunate enough though to be able to be surrounded by such a vehicle and from such an early age. Yeah, and I think the fact that he was working at Chrysler in his later career and uh, he was able to make a dream come true by being involved with the car and its restoration, pretty good story. It is awesome stuff. Now this incredible 66 Monaco we have behind me, we've already been on the road now for at least a day in this car and uh, at the moment we're in uh, Boonville in uh, Missouri making our way towards Denver in Colorado and the car, as always, these, these Mopars you get, uh, they just seem to run flawlessly all day long. Yeah, I mean, we, we left from Ohio, drove through, uh, what was it, Illinois, and then into Missouri, and uh, the car's performing faultlessly. I love the selection of cars that you've got. Now, the year before last, the Colony Park Wagon, everybody remembers the, the Woody Wagon, that episode, you can search for these on the Shannon's Club, they're all there. Um, again, it ran flawlessly. Then, last year, the big slab-sided fuselage luxury yacht, the 71 Imperial with the big 440, and now this year, um, a full-size car for its time, but a smaller 383 and a lighter car. Yeah, uh, this is a 66 model. Uh, the Imperial is a much bigger car. That's their, it's their largest vehicle they made in 71. You can definitely tell the newer car, you know, it feels more modern to drive. It's got disc brakes, it's got power drum brakes at the front. And so you've just got to drive the car accordingly, but yeah, it's, it's performing really, really well. Now, uh, before we take off this morning, we're checking uh, coolant, oil? Yep, just the main fluids to make sure everything's up to spec, that's not, you know, leaking or losing any fluids, but I think, you know, it's all looking pretty good at this stage. Awesome, Mark. Okay, well, uh, we'll continue our track across the United States for 2018. Of course, these special episodes, thanks to Shannon's. We'll catch up with you a little later. Thanks, Fletch. Whilst travelling, if one does not stop, one does not see. And this is an amazing place that we've stumbled across. Hello, Charlie, how are you? No, well, thank you, Fletch. That is good. How many years have you been here? I've been on this highway 30 years. Wow. This is, a, this is an amazing old place. The stuff that you've got here is incredible. Well, we like to sell some of this stuff. Uh, it's also amazing to see the interstate and you've got the old road next to it. Can What was it like back in those times before the interstate? Oh, this was a very busy highway. One of the main routes between New and Canada, between Kansas City and St. Louis. Right. Charlie, you must be passionate. What does this place mean to you? Oh, I like old cars. I've always had old cars. And uh, do you sell many from out front? Uh, not like it used to be. No. What was it like in the 50s and 60s? Oh, this little business with these old cars was excellent. Yeah. We sold a lot of cars. Yeah. Good for you. Well, it's nice that you're still keeping the dream alive, Charlie. But thank you. I enjoy it. That's good. Well, you keep up the good work. I'm going to let you go and have a bit of a rest now, OK? All right, sir. Thank you. Mark, this is incredible. We've got a couple of acres here of, of machinery that just right across the gamut of brands, makes, models, uh, most are too far gone. What's your thoughts? Uh, well, you know me, Fletch, some people like to come and uh, visit graveyards, you know, for people. Uh, I have a lot more fun coming to car graveyards like this. <laughs> and um, I think yeah. the fact that it's off the main road, a lot of people see it and go, wow, look at that, but they keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, we turned around and came back today, and I'm really glad we did. There's a fantastic array of cars here, quite rare uh, cars as well. Quite a few Corvairs here you mentioned as well earlier. Yeah, including the Greenbrier uh, vans as well, he's got about three of those. Mm. Uh, I spotted a, a lineup of uh, Javelins, a little bit worse for wear, but the AMC Javelins, which was their muscle car. Uh, there's a nice Buick Wildcat over the back, 
there's a really rare, there's not much left of it, but it's salvageable, a really rare Ford Control uh, Jeep. They're quite unusual, and that I reckon would be definitely worth uh, saving as a project for someone. Also, a Lincoln over the back there with factory sunroof. Yeah, the Mark III, there's not a lot left of that car at all. And I guess, uh, again, Elwood Engel uh, makes his appearance again. He must be following us around. <laughs> uh, but the guy that did the turbine car in my Monaco, there's also quite a few of his early Thunderbirds as well. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. If you have a restoration project, Hare and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hare and Forbes has the range. Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Welcome back. As we make our way across the magnificent United States of America for 2018, of course, thanks to Shannon's, we are now in Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, Greg? I'm good, Fletch. How are you? Good, good. Now, we were here last year. We we didn't interview you. Uh, I think I think you might have been a bit shy last year, right? I <laughs> still am. <Yeah. laughs> well, thanks for this one. Th this guy here... I cannot put words to the wrecking yard here. We're at Speedway Auto Wrecking, and tell us a bit about the yard. Ha tell us the size and how many cars you've got here, Greg. Well, it's 50 acres, and we went on 50 years lat this March. Of course, for diehard enthusiasts, this is the place to be because a lot of wrecking yards are full of plastic cars and late model cars, and of course there's a market there for those. But when it comes to 50s and 60s and 70s cars, wrecking yards like this, even in the United States, are, are becoming harder to find, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. A lot of stuff got crushed yeah. in the last 8, 10 years yeah. when scrap was up. It seems like, though, you're personally attached. Obviously, you love the old cars, and you, you don't want to see them. You don't want to see that happen, do you? No, not at all. It's nice to just walk, drive out here and look at them. And a lot of people come in. They're just so happy that the place is still here. And they go back in time every time they walk back, so it's really cool. It's amazing. Everything's going. Well, last year it was snowing here. I think it's about 20 degrees warmer, roughly. I think we're, we're within around about four or five days of, of this time last year. I, we, we've got sun here now, which is going to make it a little bit easier to have a look around out back. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff to look at. Good on you. All right, Greg, well, thank you for having us back. And uh, I really uh, dig this very cool Chevy here, uh, an original car that I know that you've had for a long time. Thanks for having us back. Eight years. <laughs> yeah, this little Chevelle means a lot to me. I could never get rid of it. Never even thought about selling it. And over the years when my wife and I had a little baby and not making a lot of money, hard times, never sold it. Could have sold it to pay some bills, but I found other means. But the story behind it is um, I seen the car on Main Street when I was 14 
and told my brother, turn around, I want to look at that Chevelle. It was red at the time. And told my dad, I want, I've got to buy this car. I've got $1,000 from doing my concrete work. And he says, no, you don't buy the first car you see. Wait, just take your time, you'll find something. I was so upset, couldn't believe it. I was out by the pool yard crying. And so I went to work the next day. And when I got home from work, the car was sitting in the driveway. So that was really cool. He said, you owe me 200 bucks. Give me your 1,000 and you owe me 200. So needless to say, the car was $1,200. It's a four speed super sport, which back then you could find them, but now they're kind of hard to find. And I wanted to restore the car. I just can't do it. It's everything sentimental. You know, I can't take the door panels off. I can't, <laughs> it's all sentimental. I want to leave it how it is. This grill, I hit a pole when I was a kid. And, oh geez, what was it, 81, 82. And I worked at a Chevrolet dealer. And I went in and they so oh, we'll get one. Burt Chevrolet has one. So. It was on the shelf. So I got the headlight bezel and the grill, 35 bucks and 15 bucks, I think, for a brand new grill. So, in, and if you guys come, anyone comes through Denver, uh, the number's on the wall and give me a call and we'll make you feel welcome. Come on in, take a look at some stuff. Here we are, Denver, Colorado. We're getting there, Mark. Yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a good journey so far. The Dodge Monaco has been performing faultlessly, doing really well. Uh, we travelled uh, since last time we spoke across Kansas, which is a pretty big state, and into Colorado. So, uh, as I say, the car's performing really well. I just love sitting behind it. I I love the <laughs> style of the lights. No smoke. Never once has there even been. A puff of smoke, it just goes along the road all day long, it's, uh, it's flawless. No smoking allowed. No smoking <laughs> allowed. Um, got the old um, pump jack here behind us, fairly appropriate place to stop I think. You see these along the way. Uh, this was actually working um, until we pulled up and of course when you set the camera up and you push record, well that's when it stops. Of course Classic Resto stands for our classic and preserved cars, our internal combustion engines, of course they have to run on oil. We need oil. Here we go. There's thousands of these scattered across the United States of America. <sighs> Bringing up to the surface the black gold, the Texas T. A little bit about these. They, they run uh, electric motors these days. Now this particular one here is a 15 horsepower electric motor, not an engine. Some people call internal combustion engines motors. Motor is really an electrical device. Interesting to mention electric motor on classic restos as well, although predominantly the show stands for internal combustion engines, but when we go back to the beginning of the last century, electric cars were around as far back as then. Quite amazing. Leaving Colorado into Wyoming now. This is the first time ever I've seen such carnage these diesel locomotives that we all admire so much. And there's been a, a huge pile up here. And uh, one of the roadside workers indicated that uh, the train lost its brakes and there was 53 cars that left the line. Uh, it wasn't so good for the two drivers, we're led to believe. I mean, I've never seen the level of devastation in my life. I mean, just seeing these huge diesel locomotives that, um, as you said before, we, you know, we love them so much. We always see them rolling along, you know, blasting, the, blasting their horns and things. And they look so big and powerful, they look indestructible. And I guess when you walk through this and you see the devastation, it really, it's a real wake up call. Yeah. I have to say, this is uh, becoming a bit of a, an iconic place to stop uh, while we do these trips each year. Yeah, it's a bit otherworldly around here, around Salt Lake. Uh, there's a lot more water on the lake this year though. It's amazing how it can just change from year to year. You need an army duck this time. Absolutely. Now the states we've been across. Well, I can't list them all off the top of my head, but uh, last time we spoke we were in uh, Colorado and then uh, we went through into uh, Wyoming and uh, into Utah where we are now and then the next uh, stop is uh, Nevada. 
And uh, without sounding a bit of a cliche here, but it's almost like a, a silly question now. Uh, is the Dodge running well? Well, yeah. Well, how do we answer this? Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's running really well. Uh, touch wood. Cars uh, perform faultlessly. And, uh, you know, the mileage isn't too bad either with the 383. But good performance. Even in the... Uh, the mountainous country, we came through some pretty mountainous terrain in Wyoming, uh, it, it, it took the hills without any problem. All right, well, uh, stick around with us as we do the trip. Thanks to Shannon's across the USA for 2018. And I guess, uh, oh well, next time we catch up, we're going to be closer to San Francisco. Yeah, on our way to the Shipper. Here we are. We've made it. San Francisco. You've done it once again. It was a big journey, <laughs> but we did it. Now, let's just get this into perspective. The total trip, we went to many other states before Ohio, before Mark picked up the Dodge. So in all, there's around about 10 or 11,000 Ks that have been travelled this trip. The particular trip in the Dodge worked out around 3,100, 3,100 kilometres just absolutely ripple free. Uh, it was 10 out of 10. The car performed, it ran like a top. It did not miss a beat. Uh, and when you consider drum brakes, you know, power assisted drum brakes, 1966 technology, keeping up with, uh, you know, peak hour traffic, they drive pretty quick, you know, in the cities here in America. And uh, the open desert up in the mountains and down the mountains as well, the car did. It was great. Well, isn't it amazing? You you buy a classic car and you drive it, and you find their their just their their little attitudes and all the little things that are different to a, a late model car. Um, but just doing these trips just makes you appreciate once again how good the old cars can be. Absolutely. I mean, the 383 performed really well. Auto trans really well, and as you say, with the drum brakes. I mean, you do have to be mindful of stopping distances and all that kind of thing. But the 383 engine, it kept up with the modern traffic without any problem. Okay, Mark, that's fantastic stuff. Well done once again. I guess you're thinking to yourself now, and I, I think I am too. What is he going to be driving across the United States in 2019? Mm -hmm. I've already got something in mind, Fletch. Don't tell us. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. All right. Okay, that's great, Mark. Wonderful doing the trip with you in 2018 across the United States, or pretty well most of it, a massive loop trip. And, uh, of course, thanks to Shannon's, and it's been a pleasure again, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Fletch. It was great to have you behind me all the way. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed these exclusive episodes of Classic Restos across the United States of America for 2018. Of course, thanks to Shannon's. And as I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.